Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivor and Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 30, the popular opinion show as always, a show where we talk about the latest and hottest debate at Manchester United, including the match that we just went past during the week and also some news as well. And also we look at the match preview for the next skate up and coming game, guys. Now, of course, guys, we have the usual Amuk and also Jags is here. And we have a special guest, a special guest such as Bobs. How are you doing, Bobs? What are you saying, my bro? You are right. Uh, I'm all good, bro. Thanks for having me on today. No problems. And Amuk, man, what are you saying, bro? Yeah, I'm good, you know. It's been a little, like a mixed up week for me because of United, but so far so good, I'm good. And Jags, man, how are you being, man? I'm good, bro. Um, in terms of football, a bit of a roller coaster, roller coaster week, up and down. Wow. Let's get into it. I know. And of course, guys, you know it's been a bit of an up and down week for Manchester United. Of course, during the weekend, not the best results for all of us. Manchester United losing, you know, from a winning, from a winning opportunity twice to draw against Everton on the weekend. Dropping points, of course, you know. And of course, whilst winning against West Ham, winning 1 0 after extra time, not the best performance, of course, but you know how Manchester United beat, guys. That's what we'll definitely we'll be talking about that match this, this show. And we'll be talking about, of course, the Premier League round up game of the week, as always. You know, my team, as, as always, always there, yet disappointing, as always. Arsenal, we salute you. And we'll be talking about the match preview against West Brom, the team that we'll be playing this weekend. Hopefully we can get the win, you know, capitalise on the ops. We go straight into that match, that 1-0 victory against West Ham. After extra time, McTominay breaking the deadlock, as always, you know. Scott, Scott the lad, McSauce, he's been, you know, he's been stepping up recently, you know. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, he's had his critics in the past, but these days he's he's become a new man this season. You know, he's he's scoring in point goals. He's got more goals than let's say Werner, Havertz, and them lot there. You know, he's got more goals than probably. I think he's probably got more goals than Bama Yang. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Seven. Yeah, yeah. Bro, seven. Even, even Bobby Firmino, bro, he's got more goals than him. So hats up to him, Max Sauce, man. He's doing a thing. But that match. In general, trash, you know, to have to have all that possession and being being able not to do anything with that possession. Yeah. It says a lot about Manchester United with the ball, man. And I, I, I keep saying it again and again, I don't really know what we do in training because I would love to pay for, to see a training session because then I can understand who's it. Is it the coach or is the players just don't understand what the coaches are saying? Or is it the players don't understand the coach because the coach is not good enough? Anyway, guys, we have Bob's special guest. How do you feel about yesterday's game? And let me know. Um, I think the game was a bit of a, a dry game. Um, good finish from McTominay, though. Um, I think that's like he scored five and five now. Mm -hmm. um, every time he's played, so that's that was a great, great goal for him and boost for uh, confidence as well. But I think the game as a whole, it wasn't really a good game. And then again, obviously we needed extra time to win. But happy to be free to the next round. And um, West Ham have been a bit of a bogey team in the FA Cup as well, so. Yeah, just happy to be free to the next round, to be fair. But again, it was a dead game. Not going to lie. And as you said, West Ham is our bogey team, a team that we've always had problems with, especially at the, the new stadium of London Stadium. And sometimes at home, man. I'm up, man. How did you feel about that game, bro? I was just happy that we went through, though. Because when we went extra time, I got a bit worried that if we can go through a 90 minute without no goals and stuff, what might happen? You know, you never know what happened. Tom McTominay did whatever he did, didn't did get that goal. Which, before the goal went in, the play itself, he came from far. He ran all that distance and he got there. Rashford just touched the ball. It was a brilliant goal. Laughing, kids were working hard. Like Rob said, five out of five, you can't get better than that. Like he said, he's a new man this season. He's got seven goals already in all competition this season. So, yeah, that's good. That's very good for him. Like, was a good win though for me. I just, like I said, we need trophy this season. So if we can go the extra mile to get that trophy, I feel like we have to. But the club itself needs to do better. We need to put, the, like, approaching these games, it's got to be different though. 
like this just this is the Earth Cup match approach is different because you want to win this match. You don't have to wait till 90, 90, minutes, 90 minutes. I don't think that's good. That's good enough. It was a dead match, so. And what about you, Tricks, man? What do you have to say about that game? Like Bob said, it was a very dry game. It was a dead game. Um, it's just frustrating, you know, because we have the ball. Van de Beek played in the number 10 role. And every time he got the ball, man, them weren't really running off him. I didn't see people making too many runs. So I feel like the boys were a bit lazy yesterday, you know, especially when we was in West Ham's final third. There wasn't enough runs being made. Van der Beek, for me, shouldn't be playing number 10. For me, he's not a number 10 midfielder. He can play in an emergency, but he needs to drop back. Because yesterday, for me, that was a very poor performance from him. The only person I'm really happy with is Tellez. Tellez was on job yesterday. Sure. When Shaw replaced him, Shaw was on job as well. So our left back position was great. Everyone else, I wasn't too happy with. Hats off to Scott. Um, we're through. That's the main thing, of course. But the performance wasn't great. Very boring game. Gosh, I'm so Speak happy. <laughs> Speaking of Van der Beek, as you were saying, which you highlighted, of course, saying that Van der Beek is not number 10. Does Oli realise or recognise that Van der Beek is not number 10? Because we all know he's an eight or a six. Does he recognise that? Because whose fault is it? Do you know what? I feel like Oli hasn't got options because Bruno needs to rest. Pogba's injured. Who else can play that number 10 role? In, off the top of my head, I can just think maybe Cavani can drop in there and maybe let Martial start for that specific game. But other than that, I can't see anyone else playing there. I feel yeah. maybe he what I would have done he has very matter. quickly. He's yes. got matter. He's got matter. Like, Mm. It's all this tears well, legs, but fun. imagine just put Fred DM and then the two seven mids. Maybe we, we can play without a number ten because both Scott and Van der Beek are box to box. Yeah, so they can make true. up the ground. You know, that's true. Sorry, I'm only can't reason. play without them. Only can't play without number ten. Yeah, only needs his number ten. He we all know this. Three one, and he needs that. He needs a number ten. Like, Pep will play without number 10 because you know anyone can come in and chip and do, do, do what they got to do. All he can play like that. But it's just, for him to play that role yesterday, I think it was just disappointing because he had less of the ball in the first half. I was like, wow. He didn't really touch the ball that much because he was hidden behind the players. And the way West Ham set the, the defence, they were defending very good in the first half. They just put my man in the middle. He couldn't even get the ball. And I remember the, um, they were highlighting that in the first half. Isn't that his fault for not getting the ball? Because in yeah, the number yeah. 10 role, you can move, you're allowed to move, yeah. innit? You know? Yeah, sure. I remember that's what that's what um what's his name again? Um Sinus. No, not Sinus. Um the yeah, former right. a Newcastle, the former Newcastle legend. That's Shera. That's what he said. He said he could have done whatever as number 10 to make sure he get the ball, because your duty was to get the ball and play the ball around. But he was yeah, too yeah. late back. Like he said the players were lazy. Maybe he was one of them players that he was lazy. But he did not get much of the ball in the in the first half. In that, do you, I, do you I like think it. it's probably because of lack of match fitness, not being able to play that much? One hundred percent, and confidence as well, man. He's he's like he lacks. You can see it. He's lacking confidence, isn't it? Because he's not playing. You saw his face when he got sold off. He looked hell stressed. Look yeah, like, yeah, he looked stressed. Oh, oh, yeah, this is long. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it is? Mm. The one thing I will give to Van der Beek. Unfortunately, if you're not playing week in, week out, it's tough for you to get that running form. We saw the same with Martial under Jose. When Jose yeah. was taking him in and out, in and out, we yeah. wasn't seeing the best of him. So that's yeah. the one yeah. defence I'll give to him. But yesterday, he wasn't kind of it, man. He wasn't yeah. good. For me, yesterday, Fred impressed me, you know, in the middle. Fred actually got the ball. He was taking the ball, pressing. Yeah. Like, he, I was impressed with his little... I was like, nah, do you know what? He played like Pogba a little bit. Like he can get the ball. He's just a passing aspect, but getting the ball, trying to distribute the ball. He did a lot of that yesterday, and I was impressed. Did yeah, he sprayed it a that? couple of times yesterday still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still don't I was, want to see him in the final third, because I saw him attempt to shoot yesterday again. <laughs> that guy did not shoot. <laughs> Why did he always... a professional footballer. Why do, we, why do we always get the Brazilians that can't shoot? 
Anderson as well, especially. I oh, know. Couldn't shoot, couldn't <laughs> score. Like, why? Uh, but another player. But that, the work ethic. Yeah. The work ethic is always wonderful, though. They work hard. I like them. Not Anderson, but yeah, generally. No, I, like, yeah. I like Fred. I like Fred. <laughs> I've, I've always said that since, we, since the day we signed him. And I watched him play as I like him because he did something that makes me say, no, nah, he's going to stay, stay at United and he's going to stay at United for a very long time. I see that. And another player that, another two players that caught my attention to play really poorly. One of them got an assist, Marcus Rashford, Anthony Marshall. Ineffective throughout the whole game, especially Rashford crashing into things as always. You know, mm. and I, I, I keep saying, those that, that's, that, that situation is always... To correct that, it's muscle memory, you know? Muscle memory, you know? Come on, man. Why are you running into things? Like, what is there? That What's so fun? You remind me of one of those little kids that's just, those fresh kids that's just fearless. Fearless and run into things and jump over things. Don't even care, climbing into trees and everything. Because my man's just running into players all the time, not knowing when to pass the ball. And that's muscle memory again. You can always drill and train players knowing when to pass, when to when to make that play, make to, when to make the run, when you have the ball, not to run into people. And at the same time, parenting from your coaches, don't run into people. Is that so hard to tell Marcus Rashford to not run into players? How did you feel about Marcus Rashford's performance and Marshall? Because Marshall was poor as well. Very poor. Um, Rashford, he didn't have a great game yesterday. I feel like He's, we should give it to him, though. He's had a decent season because he's got goals and assists this season, isn't it? Yeah, but that's also going to make him get away with things. I know. That's what I was just about to say, bro. It's the inconsistency oh. we're happy with, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because we've all seen him maybe two, three years back. People were comparing him with Pepe. Do you remember? Yeah. When yeah. people were like, oh, he might be better yeah. than Pepe. Yeah, no, yeah. Pepe might be better. And Pepe's done left him the way Ronaldo left Rooney, you know? So it's Mm. like Rashford, he needs to become more consistent if he wants to be seen as a world-class or elite player. Because yesterday is a perfect example. At times, his decision-making, you would just think, did he just go on pilot mode? Is he not even (laughs) somewhere else? Because there'll be a simple pass or there'll be a time to shoot and he'll just do the opposite. Mm. But at least he tried. Yesterday, at least he tried. Martial, for me, was... Oh, my... He's so frustrating to, to, yeah. to watch sometimes. He really is. As much as I love him, he's very frustrating to watch. But I know he's your boy, Amok, so please back him up. Yeah, Amok, can you tell us? Nah, I, can't I, can't him him I, can't, no, I can't back him up. Because mm-hmm. I've watched him pass, gave the ball away a lot yesterday. He gave the ball away a lot. And that's just something that you cannot do when you're playing teams like West Ham. We don't really have that much good, um, what's it called, West Ham. We always struggle. For the past few seasons, they've got three points out of us a lot. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it seems that when you play, you got to take every single opportunity. But yesterday, he was like, Jake, you just described them. He was actually terrible. The fact that I watched him pass the ball to the opposition so many times. Now, I understand what he's trying to do, play fast. But there was this in the second half. I remember there was, we're trying to do a counter. The ball have gone to, um, I think it was either Fernandez or, 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 or Rashford. But he actually passed. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't the first half. Actually, it was to Rashford. He passed the ball to the defender. The defender was just standing next to him, and he passed the ball to him. And I really got upset. And I said, "You cannot do this. And you can't like that was really poor. But like Jake said, he needs to be in the team. He needs to get back that that um, um fitness and wherever, wherever he's losing or he's confident, he needs to get back. But for the past almost a month, he ended doing what he's supposed to do. So I can't really back him up. No, yeah, you just, yeah, yeah, go on, James. Go on. No, I go. go. I'm just going to quickly say, mm-hmm. how do you guys feel about Martial playing on the left as an understudy to Rashford or maybe competing with Rashford on that side? If it got to be, right, it got yeah. to be done. I got no more yeah. hard feelings for these players now, bro. It's crunch time. Yeah, same. I think, yeah, I Martial. Like... Sorry, bro, go on. Um, I think Martial's been given so many chances, man, and he's not taking them. Like, we don't know whether he's a left midfielder or he's a striker. You give him a chance up front, he doesn't play. You give him a couple a run of games on the left, he doesn't play well. I think he's kind of run out of chances as well. Cavani comes into the team, he gets goals. Marshall plays up front, he doesn't get any goals and he doesn't really do much in the game. It's like 
he's missing all the time. Even like yesterday, he was missing other than the mistakes. And then even before the end of the game, he had a chance. He could have slotted it away. He hit it straight at the keeper. He had a couple, two or three chances yesterday. Good exactly. chance. Yeah, exactly. But let's not be too harsh on him. We do need to remember he scored over 20 goals last season for us, isn't it? Maybe true, true. he's not a player that can compete. Because I feel like Martial, the one thing with him is if we're down in the trenches and we really like, we're 3-0 mm. down or mm. things are going bad, I don't see Martial running around. Yeah, I see bro. him with his head down or, you know. So I just want to see a bit more from him. There's still a quality player there. All he just needs to get the best out of him, basically. Yeah, bro. True. Mm. Well said. Cool. So we move on straight to the game of the weekend. That 3-3 draw against Everton. The Blue Scousers. <laughs> moment of silence. <laughs> I know, moment of silence. Because it was, it's a difficult one to take in. Because Manchester United were 2 0 up. 2 0 up in the first 45 minutes, guys. Mm-hmm. And then within the first seven minutes of the second half, boom, bang, push, like just 2 2. And then getting that third goal, which which was quite lucky because of um, Everton's goalkeeper's mistake, you know. You're thinking that, yes, hold it on, guys. Just hold it on. Now, you, you do it. No. Just poor defending, poor leadership. Harry Maguire, Vindelof, De Gea, all, at all that cost, you know? And I, I don't even want to blame to Bay because only you should have never put him on. The guy just received um, racial abuse. Why are you doing this to him? And Oli always does this in the last couple of minutes. Just leave things how they are. Just leave things out there. Why are you throwing this guy into the trenches like that? And, you know, and then you know what hurts me the most? That after that, he's going to get more stick because they, everyone's going to be saying the, the problem was from Tosana Bay committing that foul. And then the rest, you know, they, won't, they won't blame Slabbit. They won't blame Slabbit. They they're, not, they're, not really, they're, not, they're not about football, man. How can you blame yeah, him? Bro. At the end yeah. of the day, he gave away the foul, but it's still, as a team, you need to defend that free kick. So you That's forget about true. you gave away the foul. It's the team's responsibility. So any United fans that I hear that I hear saying to Zanabe this, to Zanabe that, move, man. You're talking rubbish. Like you don't really yeah. know the game <laughs> well, you know. But one thing I will say, mm-hmm. I think it was a bit of a tactical error, though. Like I would, I personally wouldn't have bought on to Zanabe. I would have bought on maybe Matic to just hold the ball. Like obviously the mistake. Obviously you can't really fault him for the mistake. He tried going for the tackle, but Matic probably would have. I did experience and everything. He probably wouldn't have committed that foul, and then we probably won't have got the goal as well. But you never know. In hindsight, we don't know. But yeah, I think it was a tactical error on Oli's Oli's side, not really the players' fault. But again, we're at fault with the goal. De Gea wasn't really brave. He just let like Calvert-Lewin was more brave than he was. Mm-hmm. The goalkeeper should be taking him out, man. Trust me. Yeah, those challenges there. You either take the ball or you take the man. You take, take the man. Yeah, man. Don't. Yeah, I wasn't impressed with yeah. the hair in that game. No, no. The, the team in general, you, you don't control a game and get let back. One quick thing Thank before Amok comes in, mm-hmm. there was a ch- time where I think we was 1-0 up and it was 30 minutes in and there was a shot of Maguire, Lindelof, um, Calvert lewin and um, Richarlison. Yeah. I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be like the first game. All they need is a ball in behind. And then that's what they run in the second half. Because Maguire and Lindelof are not quick. And even for that first goal, I don't blame Maguire. For me, I know we're at home, but you need to think tactically. Maybe we should have dropped that back line an extra 10 yards. Because, boy, if there's a through ball, no one's catching up with Richardson or um, Mm -hmm. Calvin Lewis. And that's what happened. That's what happened. And again, if we had Eric Bailly in the team, who knows? It might have been a different game. Different result. You would have got there, fam. All those mistakes. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead, man. Before I before I pass it on to someone else, go. Um, what's it called? Like, I just feel like that game was. It was a, It was hard to take. It was really hard to take. Just the fact that we went two goals up in the first half, and the game turned out to be three three, and we actually got like a gift, which was the head from um 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 McTominay. Why can't we, like, I'm still saying it, United did not have to concede the last goal. We did not have to. Mm. It was something, like, it happened. This is the first time this season we've conceded goals in the 87th minute. 
of uh, the game. Anything that competing to win the Premier League itself or any title, you cannot do that to yourself. So when I when I saw that that they had a little belief that you know actually competing for the title, I actually believed that. But the Everton match just gave me next different foot. I don't think United are ready to compete. We might come second or something, mm-hmm. but I don't think we are going to compete. You, because if we cannot defend them type of goals there, because this is defensive error. You said all the names. The keeper should have done 10 times better. Because mm-hmm. that's, that you're the last man. Nice. you got to save that. you got to do something at least. Even give them a penalty that we can take that. Because you tried. Mm-hmm. But, but you're right though. You know, like that, we know it's hard <laughs> to take. Like, exactly. I, I, take. It was hard for me to take because I felt like, you know, like, you know the situation when you're in secondary school, you're going out with a girl, you're about to break, you're about to dump her, and you tell all the men and you're gonna dump her, bro. And then you, at the end of the school, you meet up with her, everyone's watching. She dumps you! You're just about to dump her, you're just about to dump her. And she dumps you see that thinking. What? Like, like, that's how hard it was to take that. Like, I was just about to dump her. She dumps you. Right, from everyone, everyone, oh. That's how that result felt like. <laughs> it was hard to, like it was oh, painful. It was, yeah. Just because we got given the opportunity, we got given the free point. We could have kept the two goal lead. Mm. But the last goal pain, it hurt. Like it hurt. Harry Maguire, man. Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof's partnership again. Yeah, again. I'm on to them, man. They cost us. Maguire's first goal. The first goal we conceded. Maguire, I just saw it. I said, like, oh, no, Maguire's usually. He's not going to catch up. He's not going to run him down and like, oh, goal. You know, <laughs> like, his, his positioning could have been a bit better. Because we all know he's on the pace. As a centre-back, you don't... Not all, the greatest centre-backs didn't necessarily have pace, you know. But it's this. Yeah. Vidic wasn't that fast, you know. Yeah, but he had he was this. With it, but he had this. He was a, yeah, yeah. Maldini wasn't very quick, but he had this. Like, you can be a great centre back, it's but positioning, even John positioning. Terry, John Terry had no yeah. pace. But yeah, but yeah John Terry won quick. And Mook was right, it's positioning. It. And Maguire has got bad positioning. Especially even yeah, when he starts off. For the past few weeks, I've been saying for the past few weeks, his positioning games are wrong. Even when we have, when, when we come to corners, mm-hmm. as the centre half, Back, you don't stand in area. You go protect the goal post in the keeper, not where he's standing, like trying to head the ball out. No, leave that for the other, leave that for the midfielders. You go defend the goal post and the keeper. Like his positioning is always wrong. And for me, I've been saying it, and it, you, we've seen it week in, week out. He's a very good, very good player when he's on things, which is the mistakes that the silly, silly mistakes. These are things you don't, we did not see. Um, this Liverpool defender, he's injured. The, the Dutchman, he didn't, he didn't make the mistake right. last season. Nah. Van Dijk, he did not dribble Van Dijk. Nah. He won the Premier League with dribble no dribble. Van Dijk, man, he smells nice. That's that, exactly so, what was name said, isn't if, it? And if we're talking about money, how much his players cost? He cost ten million more than Van Dijk. That's that's true, you know. But anyway, he cost ten million more than Van Dijk. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. He's and, and I, when I saw that, I just thought to myself, ah, oh, bye, straight away. And even Liv Lindelof, the goal that we conceded again, the second goal, where he could have at least got that head to it to clear it off, but he didn't. He fell, and I just thought to myself, ah, oh, I see this goal coming. You know what? I, I want to pipe in with this one. Go on, I think man, go on. it was Maguire's fault as well. Oh, oh, so even again. worse, even yeah, seven. Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah, Maguire. Go on. There's no fans. You can yeah. shout Maguire's ball. Lindelof would have left it and Maguire would have cleared it. But because yeah. Lindelof wasn't aware of Maguire there, mm. he tried to get ahead on it. And yeah. even that header, at least he, he kind of got it out of danger. We still had the, uh, we still had time to defend and everyone to get in precision, you know? So I don't yeah. fully blame Lindelof. Jay, I can, I add to that? That? can I add to that? Can I add to that? Of Knowing course. their level of partnership and the compa- compatibility that they are right now, Maguire would have said, I, I said it's my ball. He's gonna say under pressure. I didn't hear you. No <laughs> fucking fact. <laughs> he probably did say. He probably did say to him that it's you know my what? ball. Lin- leave it. I didn't, I didn't hear you. Lindelof no probably doesn't rate him as well. Lindelof probably says, "Shut up. It's not your ball, man. What are you gonna do?" Can I ask a question though? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Why is 
Maguire, the captain of United. Uh, only only can offer that. Because if you, if you, if you, if you captain, your leadership, decision making should be good. We've seen him with Village. You just mentioned his name. He was great. But great, not great defender, he's not great captain. He's not yeah, he's not vocal. All yeah. he does is just pull this up. That's all I see. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's all nah. I see. <laughs> <laughs> for a team to play good, you need good characters as a leader. For me, we've got good individuals, but don't have good characters as a leader. And that's what, that's what I think, we did, whatever we go through. Because all in helping, if you know your, your players are not that of people that he will not interact, the only person that has to do it is um, um, Fernandez. Even um, 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 Cavani just came in yesterday. We're doing the same thing, telling people what to do in the pitch because of, mm-hmm. of experience in that. But if all it's always sitting there, because you know you got very good players, your hands like this, or your legs crossed. Like you need someone. You need someone. I've always, I've always been saying it. We need someone to touch line there to tell these players what to do, because the mistake that they they they, they make this game. We I hear you. Should. You know what? That's, yeah. that's all his one quickly. That's all his um, job. You tell the man what to do, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's, his it's his job. And secondly. Very good point, Amor. I feel like, especially as a centre back, you have to be vocal. You're the one guy that can see the whole pitch. So yeah, if me yeah. as a centre back, I'm not telling my CM to drop back quickly, or I'm not telling the right winger he needs to come back. Why am I playing centre back? I have to be vocal. Yeah, for real. Have to be at least one of you has to be. I'm and unfortunately, yeah. we don't really have that. Like, like, Amor, yeah. let me show you something. Like, like, let me show you something. You know what, yeah, this Oli thing, yeah, I don't even blame him for watching things on the iPad because I still believe Oli doesn't believe that he's my manager. He watches that like he's a fan of us. He's there screaming, make a sub, make a sub, forget that he's the manager. He said, I don't blame him no more, bro. But again, I'm not angry at that no more. I'm not angry at him, the iPad. He's watching like he's one, he's one of us, you know? Uh, don't blame him. Don't blame like I said, him. character. We don't have any good character around the club. We just got good individuals, but someone that actually set good example are throwing is like it's that in that matters of the club. I think if it stems from him as well, the manager, like he's not a character, no, it's he's Ollie. Like, it's Ollie. yeah, he's, he's just like he's just a baby face, he still is the like, baby face. He's not, he's not a huge like character, like, said, like, it's Mr. Like, you know. Mr. Yes, yeah, Mr. Yes. literally, Mr. Yes, man, literally. He was always a yes man. Come on, man. If to, to, for a guy to sit on a bench and accept his whole career sitting on the bench to come on, you have to be a bona fide yes man. You have to be a bona fide yes man. A lie? Well said, though. If you can I never that, said yeah, that I'm going to be a bench man. I never said I'm that. I'm going to come on the bench for the rest of my career at Manchester United and score tappings and goals, yeah, and score lots of goals. I'm not discrediting him. You have to be a yes man. Because as soon as you start, in the, you, as soon as you enter the contract room, the day he's about to sign, you know you're going to be sitting on the bench, right? Yes. I know. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna say yes. You're gonna, he's gonna set one thousand pounds per week. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he was happy to sign for Manchester United as a player, and he's happy to be a Manchester Manch United manager as a manager right now. He's a yes mm. man. Well, we have to give him his kudos, though. As much as you know, I think all the viewers know what our opinion is. We want—I want to say—we want a new manager, but we feel like we should be having a world-class manager. Right now, he's competing for, for the title, apparently, isn't it? So he's having a good season. Yeah, yeah. true that. While the Champions League. That's true, that's he's true. a decent season. That's so. true. Any, any manager that managed team like United with small experience could do that. Oli's not great. I'm still going to say that. Mm. Oli's not a good manager. Yeah, for real. He's not Manchester, it's not Manchester United type of manager. He should have never been our manager. But like we've always been saying, this is who we've got. We go jump on the ball, support him, and make because he's done something that we haven't seen from all these other managers that we've had. Like he's actually given us, he's the first manager that actually gave us the hope that we might win the title. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Mourinho just came randomly and came second. See, he was far away from us. So all he actually gave us the hope. But for me, it's just like the the, the, the manager that won the Champions League for Chelsea. He got sacked the following season with Chelsea the run. Like, Oli, we need, like, but he, if he was to suck Oli right now, who are we going to get? Can't do no it, man. Let's give him till May. 
Yeah. And we've lost our main anyway. target. He's gone to PSG. For me, that was our main exactly. target, isn't it? We've missed out on him twice. Mm-hmm. If he wins the Premier League, give him another chance. That's true, man. Pardon? I will say that, definitely. If Oli wins the Premier League, give him another chance. No, of course. If he wins uh, the Premier League. Yeah. No, nah, I've seen yeah, enough. We'll me, I still enough. don't think he's the one. But I've seen you enough. If you win the Premier League, you can't sack a guy. Come on. Bro, That's the Premier Real Madrid League. Madrid sacked Chelsea managers done it. winning Chelsea the league. Done it. Chelsea man, done I don't it. care. I've seen enough. No, Chelsea man. done it. I've seen enough. No, I've man. I've seen enough, Jake. No, That's big. No, as much I as I don't like certain things, sorry. you won yeah, that Chelsea most done it. You can't get sacked for that. They sacked our manager when he won the FA Cup, right? I don't care. I don't care. Cool. I don't care. I don't care, bro. I don't really care. Like, but no, I've seen enough. Like, I've actually seen enough. We only on three weeks, five weeks ago, prior to all of this year. If you told me if you want to league, would you have given him another chance? I, I would have told you, yeah, I'll give him a chance. I'll give him an opportunity. But now I've actually seen enough. It's for the best of Manchester United's life. If he wins the league. Just say, you know what? Thank you very much. You've actually given us a platform to work on. Would you call him a legend then if he wins the league? Yeah. No? No, 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 no. He has to be. I'll, I'll, call him, I'll call him a miracle worker, not a legend. A miracle worker. <laughs> profit only, yeah? You're yeah. a joke. Yeah, pro- profit only if you want. Anyway, guys, let's move it on. Of course, there was one bad news coming out of that draw against Everton, which was Paul Pogba's injury. Now that Paul Pogba is confirmed to be injured for about a month, a groin injury, what does this mean for our team? You know, like how do you, how do you feel about this injury for Paul Pogba? You know, what would it mean for our team? Like I think, based on what McTominay has been doing, if he can keep this form, I don't think we struggle. Because remember, everyone was winning all them games. Pogba did not play though; he was. Either he was on the bench or he was injured. But Tom McTominay and Fred did this thing and we won three games in a row. So if McTominay can keep this form, I think we should be all right. We can just come back off his injury and just join the team, which he deserved to. But all I pray that McTominay keeps his form. But if he don't, I don't know. I just, I just hope all he does magic though. So, what about you, Bobs? How do you feel about that as well, man? With Pogba being injured for a month, I think we're going to miss him a bit. You know, and um, the last couple of games where he played, he actually made it. He was a difference in a couple of those games. He scored the goals against Fulham out of nothing. Um, the game Burnley as well. He scored another goal at another time as well. I can't remember when, but we're going to miss him a bit because he's brought that bit of flair when Fernandez has not been playing well. He's he's stepped up, so we might miss him a bit. Hopefully we don't miss him too much, but I think we will miss him a little bit with a bit of flair in the middle of the park. McTominay's not really a flairy kind of player, but he'll put in the get in the tackle. Get the job done. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully we won't miss him too much, but I think we will miss him a bit, to be fair. And Jax, man, what about you, man? How do you feel about that injury? Do you even think that it's an, an opportunity for man like Van der Beek as you're wearing the Dutch shirt today? You know, do you think it'll be an opportunity for him to be playing regularly? Because we all thought he was coming in to replace mm. Paul Pogba when Paul Pogba leaves. Mm. Do you know what? That's why you're my bro. You can read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's a, first and foremost, it's a big blow. He was our player of the mo- uh, month last month, January. Yes. yes. He's been our best player in 2021, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me personally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a big blow. I've already inspired you said it. Van der Beek, let's see what you're saying now. Let's mm-hmm. play him alongside Scott McTonamy or just behind uh, Bruno, him and Fred. Let's just give him more game time and le- let's see what he's really saying. You know, it's a perfect opportunity. Donny should be sad and happy at the same time. He should be happy now that he can say, yes, I've got four weeks to, to show the gaffer what I can do, you know, show the fans what I'm about. So if you can see the best from Donny out of this injury, it will be a blessing in disguise, isn't it? But yeah. it's a big blow, very big blow. 100, 100. Well, the, the, the question is, is whether Oli's going to give him that opportunity or not. Nah, really? Oli don't like that. Like literally, like literally I was going to say that, you know. No. I don't think just, he just took it out of my mouth. I was going to say that. That's all up to Oli, how he sets his teams and that, for different games and stuff. Because we've seen this season already, he hasn't been given 
um, Van der Beek that much of an opportunity. So what makes you think because of the got injured, he's going to give an opportunity? The man in form, that, I was being optimistic when I said McTominay because he's in form. If, if Pogba don't play, he's it there. He's going to get the job done. He's not a flurry type of player. We all don't like the way he plays anyways. We think he's dead. But he gets the job done. He makes this world class midfielders look dead. So for me, let him keep the form. Now we'll see what happens. Because we're still competing with um, Man City and Liverpool just behind us, even though they're losing points every week. But we don't care. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, you let us know what you thought about the two games against West Ham and Everton, of course, and what you think about Paul Pogba's injury. We move it on straight to the Premier League roundup and, of course, game of the week, my favourite part of the show, you know. Of course, this weekend, a couple of good games. Arsenal losing against <laughs> Aston Villa. You've got Chelsea yeah. winning as well. You've also got Spurs winning City thrashing Liverpool are uh, up. It's that. It's like not so good. It's it's nice to see both your ups fighting each other. You know, it's like, it's, like, it's, it's lovely. Like when you see both your ups and your ups is working your other ups like severely. Uh, I wanted Liverpool to win though. We needed Liverpool to win. Yeah, they yeah. the table, on there. But the James, table. you're saying it like you believe you're in a title race, bro. What's the point? Like, <laughs> what's the point? What I difference would they have made? Though, I ain't gonna lie. City would have dropped points and we would have not capitalised. You know us, bro. You know us. Bro, that opportunity was for us to beat Everton and beat Sheffield and beat those mm. other teams and Arsenal True. and Liverpool. But we didn't do that. True. True. <laughs> but yes, uh, that game, very good game against um, City against Liverpool. I enjoyed that, you know. But that's not my game of the week, of course. I haven't got into that, man. Just, 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 to, just to talk about the other teams before we just go in straight into the game of the week. A brilliant game, of course. Chelsea doing their thing, guys. Um, you've got what's Thomas Chukon doing his thing again. <laughs> Chelsea going back to back, man. What do you guys think, man? I said it. I said he was going to change the team. Like, he's got the type of football in it that Chelsea, the players that for an number 10 to Chelsea this summer, that's the type of players. So, for me, it was not like, I mean, he, he played three games, one, two, John, one. Mm-hmm. Chelsea climbed up, the, they climbed up the, the table a little bit, which is good for them. Like, I did say that day, he was a very good manager that Chelsea got. Do you think he can bring them back into the title charge? In terms I of think it might be too late for him this season. Why is that? Because we're already in the second half of the season and Chelsea are a little bit further. And even though Manchester City is leading, they've won 11 games consecutively in that, which is good. And Liverpool, Manchester losing point. Chelsea could come back, which is true. But City is taking this to another level. I don't think anyone is anyone is going to cut off to catch to Man City anytime soon. Mm, I don't see that true. happening. It's true. They are they're technically they. I think they're about ten points clear from Liverpool. Right? Is, that, is that correct? Uh, and if they win the if they win the game in game long. in hand, they eight points ahead of us. Also, funny was the match um, post interview with um, Jurgen Klopp. And the guy asked him a question about being 10, 10, 10 points ahead. And the guy said, you had two good answers, two good questions. <laughs> the guy said, you know, and you chose to ask this. You know, you yeah, had two well, good well, questions well, and you wasted well, a well, question. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Like, don't yeah, get me twisted. Too. I love Klopp's. I wanted Klopp when Fergie left. I, I wanted Klopp. Yeah. We both wanted Klopp. I wanted, I like, wanted Pep. I wanted, I I wanted, I wanted Punch. Mm-hmm. But li- listen, Klopp, is a very sore loser. Every time he loses games or they ask him about why his team not playing well, he, he's always got something bitchy to say. Like, Klopp is a very, he's a very sore That's loser. That's me. We don't want to lose. We don't want to lose. <laughs> That's Yo, me. Mourinho's it's the same. Mourinho's the same. No, but, Mourinho, but, they're going to say that Man City, the reason why they're favourable because the coronavirus, they had a game pause and this, <laughs> you're making it easy. That's uh, mad. <laughs> because it's snowing, that's why. Um, the goal to the feet was iced up. That's why he did a match. <laughs> Look, man, allow the excuses. Just be a man and, and say, that, hey, It's actually it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine to be put on, you know. Not, 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 not physically, but it's having like a little back and forth with them, which the report was actually not liking. And mm. just to see him showing that side of him. Mm-hmm. They're actually comparing to Kevin Keegan. 
There was yeah. a comparison between the like, Kevin Keegan. Yeah. And I was like, that kind of true, you know? Because when it comes to the media, Kevin Keegan was like the playboy. He knows how to deal with the media. But when he was not having what he wants, we all saw what he did to reporters. And this, they just made an example, the same thing that a you know, club going through. No, so that's kind of true. That's kind of true. <laughs> like, but it's the Premier League. This one, remember I've been saying it, this is the best league in the world. This is what it does to managers, to people. Because we've seen all of this because of the love of the sport itself. Mm-hmm. Like, you see the emotion these people put in. So, like, we might criticize these people, but everyone just want to win. It's hard to win. Yeah, you also got um, Jose Mourinho with his cheeky 2 0 win. His boy's back again, Harry Kane, Jags, you know, as, as well. Boring football, as always. As always with Jose Mourinho. But let's move on straight into the game of the week. It's the pop opportunity where you get to tell us your game of the week and why, of course. But well, of course, me, I'm going to start off as always because why? My blood clot team, Arsenal, lost again. Oh, <laughs> my God. Arsenal, you know. Arsenal. Ah, Villa. First couple of minutes, you know. No, I'm not going to lie to you. One new Watkins, you know. I couldn't believe it as soon as we conceded. You know that match, yeah? Fuck Williams, first of all. I don't even swear, but fuck Williams, bro. Williams, does he play against us? The question is, does William play against us? I see William do some mad shit today, you know, in that match. And you've got, what's it called? Arteta, as always. I'm always being Arteta out. I'm not going to lie to you. But that game against Villa, dropping points. We almost got into page two of the Premier League. Almost. But we're lucky. Anyway, guys, that's my game of the week, as always. My second team, Arsenal. What was your game of the week? Let's start off with you, Bobs. What was your game um, of the week, man? I would say I would say the Liver- the Man City Liverpool game. Although obviously I hate both teams, it mm-hmm. was a good game, and I was happy to see Liverpool lose because they they were getting too excited about the way they play and everything. And obviously, I like how Klopp is getting rattled as well. It's good. This is what the league does to you. That like, he needs to get rattled. You can't always have your your own way. It's happened to Ferguson. Ferguson got rattled a couple of times when Mourinho came. Now it's Klopp's turn. Let's see how they can bounce back. I don't think they're going to bounce back this season. They probably not might not even get into the top four. But, yeah. Men so don't rate Liverpool. Let me show you something. Let me, men don't rate Liverpool. Do you know why? Because, again, Jace, I was saying you before, they, they, people were dubbing them the greatest Premier League ever to mm. grace the field, you know? A team that won the Champions League this season, the following, and finished about sixth or fifth, fifth in the Premier League, and then following, I mean, so they finished second, or was, was it? Was it finished second in the Premier League? And right. then the following season, they win the Premier League. Like, that's not the greatest. The greatest team is like a Manchester United winning the Premier League and the Champions League, the best in your division and the best in, the, in Europe. And then going to want to win the best world competition. That's what you call a great team. And then Terrible. Manchester United done it twice, you know? Won it, done it twice, winning, winning the league and the Champions League twice in the same season. And you're talking to me about the greatest Premier League team. Just one season. One season, you know. <laughs> uh, Van Dijk, the best defender ever. Oh, my God. He's like, seriously? You're like, raw. Right. you like, Van Dijk didn't, like, like you have, didn't have people like Rio, John Terry. You know, players like, what's it called? Um, Fidich, who done astronomical numbers compared to what Van Dijk done in his greatest season ever in his career. Like, come on, man. Come on, these some people need to have respect, you know, for the past as well, you know. You know, this team, Liverpool, look at them now. Is it because it's COVID? Is it because there's no fans? It's a very hard, it's very hard to retain a title. We look at the history. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a rarity for But the to greatest win. team, Manchester United, they do it back to back, you know. Back to back. I have a respect, you just know? making me laugh so much. Back I'm saying to you're to you, you know? I'm just laughing. Drake, you guys you have, know? I love it. I'm actually for mm. good, you know. The way you go in ham on this team, because remember, I told you, I actually need to use the H word against this team. I hate Liverpool as a club, <laughs> I don't like them. I don't like this team. I'm a big anti Liverpool. I don't want them to win nothing. Like I told you, when you play them, I get cold. Like I feel sick. I don't want to lose to them. <laughs> it's disrespect on, on, on the greatest team that's ever graced the Premier League. Never. Don't like them. It's the football hate yeah. thing. I got it for Liverpool. Now, Jay, what about you, man? What was your game of the week, fam? 
That's an easy one, man. The City Liverpool game. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Don't get this, dude. I wanted either a draw or mm-hmm. for Liverpool to win. Yeah. I know United are not in the title race, isn't it? But just to keep things a bit more congested, man. I don't want City to mm. run away with it. But boy, as much as I hate the fact that this boy plays for Man City, I've been saying it for the last two, three years. This boy, Phil Foden. Well, Philip Foden. Cold. This guy can't be 100% English. I haven't seen an uh, Englishman that plays like that. He's very technical. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. Who the real dad is, yeah, you messaged know. me still. He's moving like David <laughs> Silva 2.0. He's got to learn. He, got, he learned from him, minute Before he retired, the guy, the guy gave him the, the king, bro, the throne here. Here's the throne, bro. I'm passing it on to you. Remember, you know, David Silva left City. Mm-hmm. So if you look at English In- midfield, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of quality there, you know. Yeah, but that's the that's. I would okay. say ideally that's their first idea, very good playmaker they're probably going to have in England centre mid because they don't have Jack playmakers. Grealish. Jack, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, but Jack Grealish, they want to play him on the left. They don't know if they want to play him on the ten. Like it's just going to be an issue. He can play anywhere. Really. I like Grealish. Play anywhere, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Grealish, but Foden is different. Yeah, yeah Foden yeah. got you know you know when you got when you buy yourself them street food. Mm-hmm. And they give you some special sauce. Mm-hmm. You never, you don't know what it is, and you, and you, and you just, and when you try that, you say, "Wow!" And it makes you go back to the same place over and That's over true. again. That's folding. That's true. But remember, Silva left, and Pep did not bother to sign no one. He mm-hmm. said himself, "I got someone. I got replacement ready." Mm-hmm. If Pep can bless someone and say them things about him, like. Jack messaged me because I was outside. I even I had to watch the highlight of the match. Yeah, that goal was dirty. Like, I was outside. Jack messaged me. Yeah, Jay Foden is killing it. Yeah, like, he was. Him and Sterling. Wow. Sterling yeah. killed it. Right. As well. Yeah. Trent looked that- like you know he's been snowing. Trent looked like he was doing ice skating outside in the snow. The way Sterling <laughs> was chopping him. <laughs> hey, <laughs> repeatedly he was giving it to him. You know. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Trent, you need to call one Bissaka and ask him, how do you defend, man? Hey, <laughs> you know what? I was going to I was going to call the police for GBH, bro. Because that's what Sterling was doing. <laughs> see what's his name, bro? No way. <laughs> oh, I'm up, man. What about you, man? What was your game of the week, man? I go for the Chelsea match, innit? Just because I said I like the uh, manager. I like his philosophy about football. You know when Klopp left um, Tottenham, uh, uh, not uh, um, Bruce Dortmund, I've always been a big fan of Klopp because he's the guy that made me like Borussia Dortmund. Mm-hmm. So when he left and Thomas Tuchel took over the club, he mm-hmm. did excellent. So I've always felt like he's a good manager because it goes the way he plays in the football that he's going in. So him going to Chelsea, that we've seen what Frank Lampard did really this season. And he ob- obviously this league, like I've always been saying, this league is one of the, it's not what is the best league in the world. It's difficult to play. You don't care what manager here you are, how, what philosophy you've got. Just bring it to the Premier League. They've got surprises for you. Yeah. But so far, in it, play three games, one two, and drawn one. Very good. I see him doing well. Cool. Guys, yes, thank you for your game of the week. And then we move it up straight to the West Brom versus Manchester United, guys. And of course, guys, do let us know who your game of the week was as well. And as I say, we move on straight to the West Brom versus Manchester United preview uh, on a Sunday. Valentine's Day for you guys, you know. If you have someone, you know, Valentine's is coming, you know. Ladies, you know, why they say Valentine's is coming? Where's your... Well, uh, I forgot the lyrics, bro. Hey, Bubs, you know the lyrics, bro. <laughs> you get me? Where's your wife? Uh-huh. Yeah, you get me? Well, yes. Sunday, 2 p.m. I feel sorry for my 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 woman because from 2 p.m. to about 4 o'clock, she ain't getting no attention. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, no attention. Valentine's Day will be on hold in those two, three hours, bro. Uh, it will resume after, especially if we win. If we win, oh my god! I was about to say if that. If we lose, oh my god! Lose, you know, right. win and lose is the same result. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. But yes, yes, Manchester United uh, against West Brom. I don't see it as a difficult game for us because why? We've got a phenomenal away record, you know. We're still unbeaten playing away so this season. So going there, we should we should win this game, three points. I'm not going to say I'm confident as always because I've been saying that we've been, I'm confident and it hasn't been going well lately. But hopefully Manchester United can go there, get the three points, 
and hopefully our ops do drop points, you know, capitalize. I don't know how Jake just disappeared, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's like a glitch, a glitch, but he just disappeared like that. But that which distracted me. But yeah, hopefully we'll win. Amok, man, what do you think, man, about the game against West Brom? I will be very disappointed if you lose the match. I'm just going to say that. It's a team that's been doing terrible in the league. Everyone will be getting point off them. I would just be really disappointed if you don't lose point against West, um, West Brom. I'll be disappointed. I hope we would. Like you said, it's an easy match to win. I hope that's how it is. Get the free point. Because I still believe we can, can we should be under Man City. We should chase behind Man City. Because you never know this Premier League is difficult. They probably lost point this season. It still can happen with Man City. So we need to keep the pressure on Man City. Go there, get the three points, and come back home. Definitely need three points. And what about you, Jakes, man? Bro, after that um, Sheffield United game, after this Everton game as well, United, don't break my heart, you know, on Valentine's Day. Oh, the way you guys are moving now is like, any game, I don't have full confidence nowadays because I don't know which my night is going to turn up. So I'm hoping for a win, of course. We always hope for our team to win, but I'm not 100% confident, man. These last few games, United haven't been on point. So let's just hope for the win, get the three points, and we also hope that the teams around us lose. That's all we can hope for. And finally, Buzz, man, what do you think about this game against West Brom, man? What's your, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, like just like what Jags was saying, like, I'm not fully confident. I hope we can win. I'm expecting a win. Um, but we just seem to bottle bottle against the small teams that like, we're becoming bottle jobs. That like, we should have beat um Sheffield United. We should have beat other teams around that area as well. Hopefully we can beat West Brom, but Sam Allardyce will come out and set his team up to just defend and then we bottle it. But hopefully we don't. We just need to get a goal, keep it, and then go from there. But I hope we do get a win. But I'm not fully confident though. I can't lie. We need to trash them. We need to trash West Brom. Yeah. We need yeah. to. <laughs> like, take another example. Of course. Well, yeah. Of course, the guys, the guys think that we should get this win, but no, not absolutely confident we'll get this win. No, no, but no. we will get this win, hopefully, you know, as always. Ah, guys, we have come to the end of the show. Another good show, of course. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know what your match prediction will be against West Brom. And of course, let me just let uh, let me just introduce the guys who wants to plug themselves in for where you can find them. And we're gonna start off with you, Bob. So um, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Bob's Graham underscore Biobele, um, and Snapchat as well, Bob's two two eight nine. And Jax, what about you, Ben? Where can they find you? Bro, I saw you're on mute. Oh, that's <laughs> wow. This guy's on mute. <laughs> Where can they find you, bro? <laughs> I am not editing this out. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I read thing is. Oh, oh yes. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Jags underscore United. <laughs> and I'm man. Where can the people find you? You can find me on Instagram, pretty flacco underscore 16. Yes, and of course, guys, you can always find me on Instagram, my personal Instagram, which is Ivorian underscore Spice. And do remember to follow the official account of Red United TV, which is Red United TV 1, baby. And as always, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, remember to share, remember sharing Ivorian Spice's game, remember to share to your friends, people you like, people you don't like, exes. As well, girls, remember to share to your exes and your current boyfriend to tell them about you found a guy that can do it better than you. Send them the link so he can be pissed off. You don't know. And as of course, guys, United fans, as always, remember to keep it united. And remember to keep it red united. We are out, bro. Peace out.